How about one of these? Anybody got a search system at their home? Get dedicated loop, planned it, put it in. So how long does it take to get hot water when you turn on the tap? Okay, so it's there in a couple seconds, right? All right, and that means that the distance, what I would call the twig coming off the, the trunk, right, is pretty short. You ran it right behind a wall. You must be your own plumber. Cool. <laughs> it's possible to get under a second, isn't it? You got to keep the twig short. That's how you do it. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about circ loops as we go through today, but one of the questions I started to ask when I started to look into this is how come you heat the return side of the loop after the last fixture? Because we have to put the pump at the water heater. And of course you have to heat the return loop, side of the loop, but there's no hot water fixtures on it. Why would you heat it? Because, right? I got the because answer. It's a great answer. Uh, so I asked, well, what if we could figure out a way to turn off the pump when the water was hot after the last fixture? Why would I want to keep running the pump if the hot water was already hot? You are supposed to insulate. Did you insulate the circ loop in your house? Why? Energy. energy. Yeah, there's a lot of energy loss. So the idea is to keep the pipe warm. It turns out from our research that if you insulate the pipe, it doesn't cool down very fast. So you don't have to run the pump as often. Okay? They're correlated. And, you know, has anybody ever found that long wires get broken in construction? Or right after, after they've closed up everything, you can't get at it again? Let's solve that problem. It's a loop. It's a circle. You could put the pump and controls anywhere as long as they're in the, in the circle, couldn't you? So if you could find access right after the last fixture in a loop, rather than putting it to water, you'd get rid of long wires, all sorts of other issues. By the way, you turn off the pump before the return side got figured out. It's a good idea. All right, the ideal hot water distribution system. Let's define it. Has the smallest volume from the source of hot water to the fixtures in question. Does that make sense? Volume is made up of length and diameter. Diameter is often fixed by code, right? What's the minimum allowable diameter in the United States for the most part right now for hot or cold? With some exceptions, but half inch is the primary number. To get 3 eighths, you have to have a debate with the code officials. Any code officials here? I don't want to debate with you. Life's too short. <laughs> okay, it's, like, it's too much of a hurdle, right? I'll try and do what the code says because it makes sense to do what the code says. Fair enough. Sometimes a source of hot water is a trunk line and sometimes it's a water heater. Unless you have a circ system in a home today, it's back to the water heater, right? In your case, your twig, right, is that long. It's from the pipe to get to the valve, right? It's as close as you could make it. For a given floor plan of hot water locations, you're going to have the shortest buildable trunk, few or no branches. I don't like branches. A branch line, almost by definition, is going to be one size or two sizes up from a twig, right? If a twig, the minimum allowed is a half inch, right? Sinks, showers, that kind of stuff. Then if I have two or three sinks, three, a sink and a shower attached together, a sink and a tub shower attached together, I've got to have a three-quarter line for my branch, right? If I have a dead leg branch of three-quarter inch, I've now got double the volume per foot as I would if I had a half inch twig. It's the twig that defines waste and weight. We have to pay attention to it. You want shortest buildable twigs, you want few plumbing restrictions, elbows matter here, tees matter, you want to minimize their use, and you'd like to insulate all the hot water pipe. Fair enough? Why? It loses heat. And our patterns of hot water use are bunched for the most part, not spread out. And because they're bunched, insulation makes a huge difference for the second draw. All right, here's the challenge to everybody. Okay. While the, you're thinking about this challenge, deliver hot water to every fixture in any building, wasting no more energy than we currently waste and wasting no more than one cup waiting for the hot water to arrive, how would you do it? I need 10 volunteers while you're thinking. Come, I need volunteers. Come on up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. I would like you to be our water heater. You willing to be the water heater? Yeah. All right, you take that end. You go that way. All right. Here, take one end, give him one end, and walk the other way. He gets all the water heater. He gets all the pipe. He's the heater. All right, you give him one end and do the same thing. Keep going. Stretch as far as you can. I want these pipes stretched out nice and neat. 
Now, I need, um, who thinks they might be the shortest person here today? And who thinks they might be the tallest? I need one of each. Come on. Who th come on, I need volunteers. I know you're out here. I'm the widest. Yeah, well, widest doesn't count for today. You, you can be the tall guy for the moment. You're going to stand there. Um, and you get to hold, you take these two ones. Two, and you've got to stand facing those folks so they can see you. All right? And you've got to straighten that out as best you can. All right, who would like the three-quarter inch pipe? Dave, here you go. You take that stand so everybody can see you. Who wants the one-inch stock? One inch? One inch. Here, three to go to one inch. That's great. And let's see what we have here. You take that one. You take that one. Pete, you can sit down. We'll get you the next round. All right. Here's the question that I need you to answer now. You've got all this stuff to look at. Here's the dilemma. If you want to waste no more than a cup while you wait, what is the maximum volume of not hot water that can actually be in the pipe? One cup. What do you think the volume of all the water that would be in these pipes if they were full with water would be? One cup. Every single one of these pipes has been specifically calculated, sent to be by the appropriate manufacturers, to be equal in volume to one cup. If anyone would like to prove it, we've got men's and ladies' rooms out here and water, we could figure this out. Okay? So let's look at these things and figure out what's going on. You've got, who's got the long skinny pipe? What diameter tubing does that look like to you? Say quarter inch. Quarter inch, quarter inch. Quarter inch. good answer. <laughs> at one quarter inch, how many feet does that look like to you? 20 Say 27. Good answer. At it's 27 feet. Do you know that every house has quarter inch tubing in it today? Ice makers? And the stub outs from the, sink, from the, the, stop, the angle stops to the sinks are almost all quarter, quarter inch today. Now, you wouldn't want to run 100 feet of it. The pressure drop would be really large, wouldn't it? But what's going to happen at half gallon per minute flow rates? Do I need three quarter inch diameter twigs? I don't think so. There's not going to be much pressure drop. It's not flowing very fast. All right. So who's got the next longest one? John, looks like it's right. How many feet does that look like to you? Good answer. It's about 17. Very good. Good estimate. And that turns out to be 5 sixteenths tubing. It's 5 sixteenths. If you don't like a quarter, 5 sixteenths would work pretty good, wouldn't it? All right, now, who's got the next one? That's 3 eighths inch diameter tubing. And how many feet does that look like to you? Good answer. OK, 12 feet. <laughs> All right, not too bad. All right, who's got the half inch stuff? You guys over here. All right, let's look at this carefully now. How tall are you, John? You can pick feet and inches. It's OK. You're taller. That's right. So let's go for feet and inches. You're five, six? About five, six. And how tall are you? I'm six, two. OK. Turns out that five feet, or five and a half, 5.2, five, something like that feet, in copper is equal to one cup, half inch diameter copper. This is six foot four, and this is six foot six or seven. When you actually straighten it up, it's about that tall. So when somebody asks you how tall you are, the answer is about the height of one cup of water and half inch diameter plumbing. OK? Because we all are about the height of one cup. OK? Now, you've got the 3 quarter inch stock. Try and make it flat so we can see the relative heights. That looks good. What does that look like to you? Three to four feet? It's about right. You've got the one inch stock. What does that look like? Say 18 to 24 inches. Good answer. <laughs> All right. You, yeah, it's 16 inches long, and this is a foot. And this is one and a half inch diameter stock. Does everybody get the point? You can get to one cup, but you've got to think about the diameter. Now, I'm not convinced that one cup is the right answer. But I am convinced it's the right way to think about it. 